Welcome class. In this video, we were going to go over lesson 9-1 practice B worksheet on geometric sequences. This is a, another follow-up video to a, the, the previous video on geometric sequences uh, reading strategies. Just a quickly review here. A basic geometric sequence looks like A sub N equals the first term, a sub 1, times some common ratio r raised to the n minus 1. These geometric sequences grow either very fast or they grow very slowly. Let me go over here. So I have y equals 2 to the x here. Here's a graph that is growing very quickly as a geometric sequence. We can also do one that's going to grow uh, a little bit fa faster. Here, let me show you here. This is actually more of an exponential graph than I should say a geometric sequence. I'll make it look more like the geometric sequence, the a sub n. So it's going to equal some first term. I'll call it 1 in this case. And we're raising it to the 2 raised to the x minus x minus. Uh -oh, let, me, let me do parentheses here, x minus. One, which of course x and would normally be like an n value, and we can see here's a geometric sequence. This is a growth. We can also have a decay sequence. I'll just do a number. I can just ignore the one here. It's just we're, we're going to raise it to the make it a one half here, and we're going to raise it to the n minus one, which I'll call x minus one, just for. Desmos. And see the blue line here? This is a decay. It's, it's decreasing very quickly and then it slows down. And on the growth side, it's growing very slowly and then it grows very rapidly. So these are geometric sequences and they're very practical in the real world, especially in your biology classes. So let's take a Look here, I'll give you an example of a geometric sequence. Like a simple one would be 5, 10, 20, 40, uh, 80, etc. To write an equation, we always have to identify first the, uh, the first term and the common ratio. Each time, what are we multiplying by? That's the first question. What are we multiplying by each time to get the next number? To go from 5 to 10. Let's see, 5 times r has to equal 10. If I solve for r by dividing both sides by 5, I get r is 2. And the first term, of course, is 5. So we can now write our general equation, a sub n is equal to the first term, here's the first term, 5 times the common ratio of 2 raised to the n minus 1. And as a reminder, n is the term. So n could equal 1, it could equal n could equal 8, it really could equal any, any uh, number. It will be limited on some word problems as to how big n can get. But in, in theory, n could be, can go up to infinity, or any number. Infinity is not a number, just a concept. Number one, find the next three terms in each geometric sequence. First, we need to identify what the r value is each time that we're multiplying by. In this case, the r value is negative two. Excuse me, positive two. I thought the signs were flipping there. So each time we're multiplying by two. So the next series of numbers will be negative 80, negative 160, and then negative 320. Just multiplying by 2 each time. We're doubling the numbers. Let's look at number 2. We're going from 7 to 56 to 448. 7 times what value of r would give us 56? r must be 8. So we can find the next series of values. Let me use a calculator here. These numbers are a little too big for me to do. We're going to multiply each number by 8, the, the next number by 8. 
So if we have 3584 and we multiply it by 8, we're going to get 28,000. Oh, I lost the value there. 28,672. And then we're going to times that number also by 8. So I can just do times 8. And we'll get the next number, which is 229376. 229376. And of course, we're going to have one more value. It says to find three terms. These are very large numbers. We're going to times it by 8 again. And we and this time we're going to get, oops, I lost that, 1 million, uh-oh, 835 and 8. And there you go. Those are the three numbers. Now let's look at number three. What are we multiplying by each time to get to the next number? To go from minus 10 to 40, the common ratio R must be negative 4. So we're going to multiply each number by negative 4. So 640 times negative 4. Let's see if we can do that here. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. 24 and 1 is 25. So it would be negative 2,560. And then we're going to times this number by negative 4 again. And negative 4 again. And I think it would be good, just good practice for you to just to do the next two numbers on your own by multiplying by uh, uh, negative 4. When I say times, I mean times it by negative 4 each time. Number four, and I'll leave it here. I just want you to figure out what the next two numbers would be. Now, 40 times R must be 10. What would that be? If it's not obvious to you, you could always just, just write a little simple equation. 40 times R equals 10, and we solve for R. We will divide both sides by 40. So we get R equals 10 over 40, which reduces to 1 fourth. So each time we are multiplying by 1 fourth or dividing by 4. So what would be the next term be? It would be 5 eighths times R, which is 1 fourth, which is 5 over 32. There's one answer. And then to find the next one, we'll multiply it by 1 fourth again, which would be 5 over 128. And then, of course, we'll multiply it by a third number times 4. So we're really multiplying just the 4 in the denominator. And again, for this one, I want you to do this one on your own. Number 5. Now, the first term of a geometric sequence is 6, and the common ratio is negative 8. Find the seventh term. Let's go back to the basic form we're using for a geometric sequence, which would be here. A n is equal to a one times r raised to the n minus one. So the first term is six. The common ratio is negative eight. And we're going to ask us to find the seventh term, which is 7 minus 1. So that will simplify to 6 times negative 8 raised to the sixth. Let's pull up the calculator here. Let me clear this. We're going to do 6 times, I'm going to put a parenthesis here, negative 8. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to do 8 first and then a plus minus. There we go. And then I'm going to raise that to the sixth power. There we go. And we're going to get 1,572,864. Let's see if I can remember that number. It's 1,572,864. It's a very large number. So geometric sequences grow very quickly. Number six, the first term of a geometric sequence is negative three. Let's see, write the general equation here. Actually, I mean, right? And it says, it says 
find the sixth term. And let me just write the proper notation. I wrote as a sub n. It would actually be a sub 6. We're trying to find the sixth term. The first term is negative 3. The common ratio is 1 half. And we're going to just find the sixth term. So it's 6 minus 1, which of course is to the fifth. So let's see. What do we get in this case? Well, it's going to be negative 3 times 1 half to the fifth. 1 half to the fifth is 1 over 32. So it's minus 3 times 1 over 32. And of course, the final answer would just simply be minus 3 over 32. Let's look over here now, make this a little bit smaller. Number 8, or excuse me, number 7. The first term of a geometric sequence is minus 0.25, and the common ratio is 3. Find the tenth term. Well, I think now we're feeling more confident, so we're going to just jump right into the equation. We're trying to find the tenth term, which is a sub 10, equal to the first term, minus 0.25, times the common, oh, I shouldn't, let me don't, not put a parentheses, because we haven't been doing it this way, times the common ratio of negative 3, raised to the 10th term, which is 10 minus 1, which of course is going to be to the 9th power. So let's try this in a calculator. We have 0 0.25, but it's a negative, so I'll put a plus minus in sign there, multiplied by common ratio of a negative 3 raised to the 9th. And we get 4,000. 920.75. Let's try the next one. Number eight, what is the 12th term of this sequence? Well, we need to first figure out what the common ratio is each time. What are we multiplying by? Well, the common ratio for this one would just be positive 3. We also need to identify the a sub 1 value, which is the initial value. And the first value we see is negative 4. So the equation to find the 12th term is going to equal to the first term, negative 4, times the common ratio of positive 3, excuse me, raised to the 12 minus 1, which of course will be 11. So we're going to do a negative 4 times common ratio of 3 raised to the 11th. I think the xy key here to the 11th. Let's hit equal. So minus 708,588. Number nine, what is the tenth term? Again, we must identify the common ratio. In this case, it is negative three. We're multiplying by negative three to go from two to negative six. And then we multiply that by negative three again to get to 18. Now, what is the first term, a sub one? It is two. So we're trying to find the tenth term. So I'll write as a sub 10 is equal to the first term times the common ratio raised to the 10 minus 1, which of course is 9. So we have 2 times, parentheses, a negative 3 raised to the ninth power. Be, this equals negative 39,366. Number 10. What is the common ratio for these numbers? It goes from 50 to 10 to 2. If it's not very obvious, we can always write a little equation. We know it's, it'll be 50 times, we start multiple by r, would equal 10. We, we now solve for r. 
r would equal 10 divided by 50, which reduces to 1 fifth. So the common ratio is 1 fifth. Now what is the first term? The a sub 1 is 50. It's asked us to find the sixth term. So we'll do the equation again. a sub 6 is equal to the first term of 50 times 1 fifth raised to the 6 minus 1. Prince, I'll do 1 divided by 5, close parentheses, and raise that to the fifth power. And we're going to get 0 0.016, or 16 thousandths. Of course, we can convert that back to a fraction if we want to and just reduce it by writing 16 over 1,000. Number 11, here's our, our only word problem in this assignment. A shoe store is discounting shoes each month. A pair of shoes cost $80. So here's one pair of shoes and the cost is $80. The table shows the discount prices for several months. Find the cost of shoes after eight months. So each time the shoes are getting cheaper. They went from 80 to 72 to 64. So remember, the 1 here, the 2, and the 3 are just the term numbers. The first term, the second term, the third term. If it helps, think of the numbers like this. It goes 80, 72, and then 64, 80. And we're trying to figure out what, would, what's, what number it would be for the eighth month. We're just trying to find some value here. Well, how much would it be as it keeps decreasing? The first thing we have to do is identify the common ratio. And the ratio should be less than 1 because the numbers are getting smaller. This is a decay. So we're multiplying by some value r to get the 72. Well, 80 times r equals 72. If we solve for r, we're going to get 72 over 80. That reduces by 9. Or excuse me, 8. 8. So we will get 9 over 10. 9 over 10, of course, is 0 0.9, so it's 90%. Each successive month is 90% of the previous months. That means we're taking 10% off of a discount every single month. Each month, we're taking 10% off the price. So let's just write the equation for the eighth month. A sub 8 would equal the first term, which is $80, times 9 over 10, or 0 0.9, it does not matter, raised to the 8 minus 1. So 80 times parentheses. Just to make it easier, I'll just call it 0 0.9 raised to the 7th. So the price would be, oh, I lost it there, $38.26. We need to go to two decimal places. So $38, and I believe it said, yeah, 26 cents. I just wanted to make sure. There we go. Now, it's very important that you always remember the basic equation for a geometric sequence. In another video, I explained why it's n minus 1. It's because we're always starting off with the first term. And so when we're trying to find the, another term, we, we are including the first term right here. So we're not off by one of the terms. We have to do n minus 1 because we're already starting with the first term as a sub 1. Well, that concludes uh, this lesson.